Dear learners, this session is on sustainability science in India. In the last session, we have looked into the growth of sustainability science and emerging discipline. Here, we'll touch upon how sustainability science is growing as a discipline in India. The sustainability science is being conceived as an independent discipline in the higher education system across the world to bring a commitment through education on sustainable development. It seeks to understand the fundamental characters of interaction between nature and society. As we are aware that environmental degradation and poverty on one side and ecological imperialism on the other are the main threats to sustainability of the planet Earth. Hence, there is a need to integrate and reshape the natural, technical, social, economic, and ethical sciences to accommodate the current and future needs of human beings. The impact of environmental degradation has no boundary, as you know. And therefore, there is a need for a common effort to control the degradation at global level. Against in this backdrop, the concept of sustainable development was introduced in the year 1987 by World Commission on Environment Development in its report, Our Common Future. The geographical difference bring about changes in different cultures and traditions across the globe, thereby giving rise to the diversity in community, diversity in everything. You know, we'll say diversity in biological resources, diversity in cultures. One nation has culture and tradition that is differed from the other governed by the existing natural condition or local environment characteristic. The issue of sustainable development are location specific, but the aim is to have sustainability of the planet Earth. Therefore, major objective of this new emerging discipline, sustainability science, is to nurture a generation of leaders who are capable of appreciating the significance of changes in global, social, and human system and who thread the part of sustainability in implementing policies on the basis of understanding the origin of the concept of sustainability science and sustainable development. Implementing sustainable development requires involvement of different stakeholders from the farmers to decision makers at different levels, across different levels. Here, the role of education is unavoidable, wherein different methods of education can be used to sensitize and maximize participation. High populated countries like India and China, you know, the major hurdles to sustainable development are issues of population growth, accompanied by high consumption lifestyle, which is associated with low economic progress, and then environmental degradation, food security, and unplanned expansion. And in these developing countries, the major challenges is the expansion of economic growth. This expansion of economic growth causes environmental degradation and that finally affect to the social system. This complex issues of development and paradigm during the last few decades, like we have a special economic zone, then issues of GM crops, genetically modified crops, unsustainable mining versus uh, the social equity and inequality uh, issues, gender biases, then rights and justice to the uh, native, are some of the key facts that signify the need for a participatory approach of planning and development, where a holistic understanding is required. It can only be achieved by increasing knowledge sharing and cooperation among various economic sectors and decision makers. Thus, sustainable science is an emerging discipline towards this direction where we can sensitize stakeholders and their groups to achieve common goals. So as we mentioned, we have uh, discussed in the last session that number of academic programs in sustainability science is growing across the globe, like uh, Arizona State University, Harvard University in the US, Lund University in Sweden, Maastricht University in the Netherlands, Lufana University, Lundberg in Germany, the Technical University of Catalonia, uh, Barcelona, Spain, Stellenbosch University, South Africa, and the University of Tokyo, Japan, and in India, Indira Gandhi National Open University. Then the question comes when we talk about sustainable science education in India, then whom to educate, then what to educate, then how to educate means approaches of education. And we talk about what to educate, how to educate, who to educate. These questions are not an issue in India at present. We clearly understand that environment and education is widely practiced up to undergraduate level. The need is to produce a group of leaders who are committed to sustainable development. 
The basic of sustainable development, its approaches and models across different sectors need to be focused. So looking at the progression of sustainable development education across the globe as a new emerging discipline, sustainability science in India also should tackle it. We may look forward to have some more sustainable leaders in the years to come and even serve as a hotspot from where the other countries can seek advice. Bringing all the stakeholders together to a common understanding of these multiple challenges at a time is the greatest challenge, especially in India, where percentage of education is very low. Here we should use education in, as an effective tool. But how to effectively achieve the desired outcome through this tool is also a question that needs to be reviewed. Then question comes, whom to educate? People's involvement and participation are critical for securing inclusiveness necessary to promote sustainable development at all levels. If we look into the process of implementation of planning and development, we can see the stakeholders at different stages. And we divide it into, we can see into three important stakeholders. That is stakeholders one, that is general public, who are the direct beneficiaries, then stakeholders two, scientists or academics who studies the issues for an alternative, and stakeholder three, policymakers and planners who have the authority to implement. When you talk about stakeholder one, the stakeholders one include the general public, including those highly educated citizens working in a highly specialized profession. They need to be sensitized on the different issues of sustainable development as a holistic approach, so that they may become aware of the issues from multiple perspectives. Stakeholders two, the policy makers and planners, including politicians, may be considering this group. They may need to be sensitized and educated about a holistic understanding of any of the issues and effective implementation of planning and process to achieve a common goal. Academicians and scientists who bridge the gap between stakeholders one and two, it can be taken as a different stakeholders, that is stakeholders three. They need interaction among themselves with other stakeholders. They need to share the knowledge in achieving common goal for sustainable development and education. Then the question comes, what to educate? When you look into the structure of the courses in different universities across the globe, you will see, you will observe or you will see that their major focus is on local specific issues to address the challenges to sustainable development. India is a developing country with high population growth rate, needs more food and more livelihood options to survive as a healthy nation. We have highest number of youth in the world and one of the youngest nations. We are in a country with high biological diversity and diverse landform with different agroecological zones. Our rivers play an important role in the global hydrological cycle. Our mountains play a key role in the climate of this subcontinent. Moreover, India is home to communities with diversity in culture and tradition. This unique characteristic of diversity is threatened by global environment and phenomenon, climate change and economic reformation and the globalization of economy. Climate change threatens the flow of rivers, availability of water, production of food, and, and finally the livelihood option. The name of economic liberalization, small scale enterprises are all on the verge of extinction, and traditional culture are already under threat. Looking into the complexities of this issue, the need of the hour is the research and education that cares in a holistic manner. Social issues have to be linked in an integrated way with environment friendly economic progress. It has to teach the foundation of do ecology and not just don't ecology. So in Indian context, any development pathway should give three indicators as benchmark, that is pro-nature, it should be pro-nature, pro-poor and pro-woman to make the development inclusive and sustainable. Thus, it may be introduced under two components, the contemporary issues and our traditional ethos. When we look into contemporary issues, as we know that, the Green Revolution of 1960s brought a quick relief to India. But the consequences of Green Revolution has left us with environment in degradation. It led to a strange paradox of mountain of grains on one hand and millions of poor on the other. Major issues like decrease in groundwater level, scarcity of water, and decrease in agriculture yield brought the social issues like nutrition, food security, etc. These issues may be either social or environmental, it is a threat to a livelihood in a country like India, where agriculture is the main source of economy. Again, whether recent economic progress in India, or we say gross domestic product GDP, is able to secure our environment in general and sustainability in particular, 
where more than 70% of, of our population are still in rural areas and majority of them are without livelihood security. Irrespective of uh, rural and urban divide, the number of people without livelihood security is increasing. The increasing number of migrant workers in the city, especially in the uh, informal sector, is not having a secure livelihood. They do not have enough food to eat. Basic amenities like health and hygiene are still need to be improved. What we can expect from the, for the children of these migrant workers? Where and what is their future? In brief, what we can look is that all the issues is insecure livelihood across section of the society. Rich or poor, urban or rural, and uh, again, uh, all real. So it is affecting all. These issues need to be studied as a contemporary issues to achieve the sustainable development. We need to find out an this approach to minimize all these disparities, all these issues. If we look into traditional ethos, as you know, India has a host of physical as well as sociocultural diversity. Examples of sociocultural diversities are in terms of community, structure, society, cultural norms and tradition. Then you will see we have geological and geographical diversity, landform and structural diversity, ecosystem diversity, and of course, biological diversity are an example of our physical diversities. This major characteristic of the domain diversity reflects that bringing sustainability is not an easy task in India. Understanding all these and their effective linkages will is very much necessary in implementing different sustainable development programs and policies. Despite implementation of number of sustainable development projects, we do not see much progress. Even we will find out uh, that corruption and money laundering and it has become one of the social issues in this dish. If we look into the present socio-political issues of the country, we realize that we should bring back our is all it was, which is reflected in our ancient scripture from top to bottom. That is, all section from policy makers and planners to the general public. As we know, sustainable de uh, development is described as a discipline that seeks to understand the fundamental character of interaction between nation and society. So in India, sustainability science must focus to train a career of youth who will be keenly aware about the value and need of the deep-seated sociocultural roots that have defined India's unique philosophical outlook on environment development. Then which part do we need to take? So of course, education may be one of the key factors in achieving such goals. Environmental education at school level brought awareness about environmental problems and our responsibilities in protecting it since the last four decades. Is it going to be enough for bringing sustainability? Or is there a need for action for sustainable development? There is still a big gap. Moreover, when the issue of sustainability comes, dynamic nature itself brings attention to understand the same issues at different levels at a time. So the need is inter or interdisciplinary understanding. Hence, the need is a group of leaders, irrespective of age and gender, who are committed to the environment and sustainability. The deteriorating environment and quality in the response of political classes in India, then an environmental literate prime minister would certainly help in the promotion of environment and sustainability. The question comes, are the present politicians not environmentally literate, vertically and um, uh, this horizontally all section of the society to educate the issues of sustainability from a holistic perspective? Again in India, the issue of sustainability is not a new phenomenon. Professor Swaminathan at various platform remind us again and again that sustainability has been an integral part of our ethos and is reflected in our ancient scriptures. So it is the hunger for power by the poor seeker leading to corruption on their part and threatening of all sections, including them. So we need to transform our own individual and collective behavior Environment and values are already built in our ethos, though we are not uh, behaving in accordance with those environment and values. And in fact, we seem to be behaving in the exact opposite direction. So if education is a way to achieve, we need sustainable education at tertiary level. So education, as we know, education is a way to achieve sustainability. Then the sustainable education needs to be promoted at tertiary level. Then the question, next question, how to educate, means approaches. The approach we may adopt is to train highly specialized experts from the group of young generation, update the knowledge and the understanding of the policy makers and the planners 
through regular training and integrate sustainability as a major component in the existing higher education curriculum and in all the administrative training academies. The approach we may adopt is to train highly, uh, highly specialized experts from the group of young generation, update the knowledge and the understanding of the policy makers and planners through regular training and integrate sustainability as a major component in the existing higher education curriculum in all the administrative training and academies. When we implement sustainability education, we should not implement as a literacy program, but as a participatory education program. In this new education revolution through ICT, information and communication technology, the option of open and distance learning, it should be given to priority since you know this may be the only option through which we can deliver at the progress of knowledge experience through a formal way at different stakeholders. So the point is that we can as an introducing convention, okay, we have done it. Okay. So in this way, the United Nations Decade of Education for Sustainable Development, 2005 to 2014, Indira Gandhi Nation Open University established Chair for Sustainable Development and uh, the honorary chair for chair for sustainable development was Professor M. A. Swaminathan, and under his guidance, the university developed a number of sustainability science-related programs with the purpose to enhance awareness in a wide spectrum of scientists, environmentalists, administrators, social scientists, policymakers, and enlightened corporate sectors on the urgent imperative need to put sustainability in the centers of all their endeavors. And as an initiative of sustainability science education, a special planning session was uh, sponsored by IGNO at 95 Indian Science Congress that was held in Visakhapatnam uh, from 3 to 7 January in 2008. In this major sectoral and thematic based issues are taken to develop the courses looking into the unique character of our country, the problem and issues with our unique rivers, mountains and ecosystem with the linkages to biodiversity, social issues are well focused on those courses which are developed by IGNO. The courses are built on the foundation of ethics, economics, equity, energy, employment and education with major focus on pro-nature, pro-poor, pro-women based sustainable development. Few of the courses are developed uh, during that uh, United Nations Decade of Education uh, of Sustainable Development. There are appreciation program on sustainability science, leadership program on nutrition security, appreciation program on sustainable management on wetlands, leadership program on Himalayan ecosystem, appreciation program on sustainable management of Ganga, appreciation program on sustainable management of biodiversity, appreciation course on uh, population sustainable development. Then we have developed, uh, university developed post-based diploma in sustainability science which is offered through open distance learning system as a part of IGNO's uh, and its uh, vision uh, to reach sustainable science education uh, across the country, irrespective of uh, uh, across the country. This course, sustainable science, it have uh, 32 credit. It is a seven theory course and uh, one project. There are sustainability science, ecosystem and natural resources, sociocultural system, ecological economics, institution governance, policies, strategies, and models uh, for sustainability and challenges to sustainable development. Uh, we can conclude that higher education needs to play a significant role in achieving SDGs by 2030. So we need to establish sustainability science is stand alone discipline with an objective to produce a group of leaders who are fully aware about a transdisciplinary nature of sustainability and uh, this will make them to convince the policy makers across sector as mediators or experts. When we introduce sustainable science education in India, first and the foremost thing we need to understand is looking into the complexity of this particular uh, emerging discipline in the sense that bringing sustainability needs uh, uh, education to all sectors, uh, all sections of the society. So we touch upon whom to educate. Then India being a developing country, our issues and our ethos, uh, our issues and uh, our social systems are very diverse. Then 
the question comes what to educate. Then when we look into what to educate, then we can see that when you talk about sustainability, bringing in sustainability, we need to understand the contemporary social, environmental and economic issues. That needs to be integrated with our cultural ethos. Then how to educate? If we look into the present education system in India, it can be looked into first a conventional education system and another is open distance learning system. In conventional education system, we can introduce this as a separate discipline and uh, the advantage of open distance learning can be used in reaching or enhancing knowledge of different stakeholders across the country, across the age, across the society. Then we can take the advantage of the modern information uh, inform ICT, information communication technology to reach the sustainability education. Then we have touched upon how sustainable science education was developed, how uh, the uh, IGNOS initiative on sustainable science education in promoting sustainable science education to reach to the unreached by developing a number of awareness program during the last one decade and introducing postgraduate diploma in sustainability science. And probably IGNO is the only university in India that introduced sustainable science education program and that looks into the truly holistic approach of sustainable development. So with this, let us meet in the next session. Thank you.